Oh my gosh. This is a Moschino bag. Oh my gosh. Look at these tiny little groceries inside. What a fun surprise is that? Hey, welcome to my home. So excited you could make it. I'm sorry I'm not in my full drag attire for you, but I figured this was good enough. I came to LA originally to be an influencer and makeup artist. I've been doing drag for eight years and I did one show here actually at FUBAR and that night there just happened to be a bunch of club promoters. So I just started getting booked and booked and booked and booked and booked and I ended up having to quit my job because I was doing drag so much and then I auditioned for Drag Race and got on. And LA is the place to be. When I first moved to LA, I moved straight to Hollywood Boulevard. I started working in WeHo and met the House of Avalon, started hanging out with them, and I would be Ubering from Hollywood to their house all the time. And when it came time to, for my lease to come up, I just decided I would move um, kind of in the area. So when I moved, I actually lived right up the street in an apartment um, that was like a two minute walk from their house. And then after that lease was up, this house, which is literally directly across the street from them, went on, you know, on the market and I just decided um, to bite the bullet and get a house. <laughs> the house of Avalon is like, literally I can look into Simone's window right now um, from this one. And this is where we get everything done. We do shoots in here and move the tables apart and put up a full seamless. Um, and the house of Avalon is where, it's like, that's like playtime. You know, we sit there, we watch movies, watch TV and stuff like that. But this is where we work. I got these two giant industrial tables to have all the workspace um, I could ever need. Simone is and has been a part of the house of Avalon for five plus years since they all lived in Arkansas. And um, the House of Avalon moved here before Simone did. So I had met the House of Avalon and become friends with them before Simone moved here. So when she moved here, I remember coming to Mickey's and Hunter was like, this is Simone, she's part of the family, make her feel at home. And then I walk up to Mickey's and there's just this gorgeous ebony enchantress in all white sitting in the VIP booth and I'm like, God, I'm nervous to talk to her. I love to have memories, memorabilia, artifacts, if you will, from my career just hanging around. And one of those is this button dress that was wrongfully not critiqued on my season of RuPaul's Drag Race. Thank God I was safe on the episode, don't get me wrong, but the amount of work that went into this goddamn outfit is absolutely insane and deserved a critique from um, RuPaul Charles. I would say LA had a pretty big impact on my drag, but not necessarily because of the drag scene here and not necessarily because of the city itself. I think the biggest impact on my drag has been the people I've met and the, the family I've, I've built here. This is Deborah, the mannequin. Mannequins are very fun to me. I just love having them. I went to kind of this like store supply warehouse and they just had this mannequin with her leg up in the air. And I said, I have to have her and paint her orange. So that is exactly what I did. And um, I'm gonna just shuffle right on through here so we can make our way to the other side of the room. I just turned the light off, one sec. I really wanted to feel like most of the stuff in here was very one of a kind. And for that reason, I did a lot of thrift shopping for furniture. I did a lot of like, you know, marketplace and antique stores. And I don't know, I just put a lot of value in having things that no one else does. I think this is my favorite piece of my home. It is just this neon sign that is my self-proclaimed catchphrase, good morning, hello, I say that for everything I do. This is kind of the first space I've like really had and been able to decorate myself since being on the show, so it's been really amazing to do that. But you are probably more interested in seeing some of my costumes and some of my hairs and my shoes and accessories and whatnot. So why don't we take a little trip into the bedroom, shall we? This is quite literally where no magic has ever happened. But here is where I keep all of my drag and my hair and my looks and my accessories and just clothes in general. This is like 
the wall of Gigi. Most of the looks here are made by my mother, Christy with a K. And um, it's just nice to like wake up and see all of this across from me. And this is really weird, but some of the costumes kind of smell like my mom, which is just really nice. So sometimes I just smell them. My situation with my mother is very unheard of, very unique and interesting. And it's so funny that when I went to audition for the show when I was leaving for the show. My mom had absolutely no idea the impact that this show has and had no idea the, the volume of it. And so even to this day, she doesn't believe she has any fans. She doesn't believe that anybody looks up to her. She's very hard on her work. Having my mom in my corner with the talent and skill that she has and the love that she has for me um, is out of this world. This was for Halloween two years, three years ago. These sleeves were meant to replicate like pumpkins or gourds. And if you look like closely, there's literally no telling how this woman constructed these sleeves. It is one of the most uncomfortable looks to wear ever because you can't raise your arms, but um, in practical fashion is my favorite fashion. My mom has this like weird ability to just like turn sketches into reality exactly how I drew them and she's like, made faux boobs. It just like, I don't know. It's just everything fits me perfectly and this is so Christmassy. The lining is red sequins and the pants are the same detail as the sleeves. This is certainly one of my favorites and another one that I need to see right when I enter the room and wake up. When creating a look with my mom, um, the process usually goes with me coming up with my own idea. I'll sketch the look. I'll send it to her because she lives in Chicago. Usually she'll go fabric shopping there. Or I'll go fabric shopping here and send it to her. And then, I mean, about five days later, I'll get a look in the mail. <laughs> My mother made this one for the show. And originally, this look was just made with the pants. Um, and it was made of tablecloths from our Easter Sunday service at the church that my mom frequents for choir. And then when I got on the show and there was like the springtime runway, I was like, okay, what's gonna go with these 80s, like high rise parachute pants more than a matching motorcycle jacket? And she just happened to have fabric left over. So she made the motorcycle jacket I painted the helmet by hand, and I don't think it could have gone any better. I was in the top of that episode too. <laughs> it's all coming back to me. I am 100% enthralled with the fashion part of drag. Fashion is so important to me, and when it comes to knowledge of fashion and the fashion industry, designers, models, stuff like that. That's only been a recent development for me. Um, and it really only happened when I moved to LA and met the House of Avalon. And if you go into their house, every single surface of every wall is covered top to bottom in pop culture memorabilia, designers, fashion, influences, you know, Joan Rivers, Grace Jones, all that stuff. And it's a really inspiring space. And I've definitely had to do my homework since meeting them. But I really do pride my passion for fashion um, being in the realm of, I guess, ignorance of the fashion world, for lack of a better term. I didn't know any of this stuff, which in turn I feel made all of my original looks a lot more original. This is my um, season 12 reveal look that was like done in that like warehousey, like grungy vibe, which I love that theme for us. And I think we all fit the theme so well. This is the Jean-Paul Gaultier inspired velvet ruched dress that Marco Monroe made for me for the finale of RuPaul's Drag Race. This fit me so well, it's so me. It was such an amazing collaboration. I just like to keep this at the end, first of all, because these cones are very impractical for hanging with other clothes, but also, it's just like gorgeous to look at. It's the first thing you see when you enter my room. Right now, my favorite silhouette is as much skin as possible and showing off my body, showing off my legs. I don't wear tights anymore, so I shave and have a nice glossy leg, not as glossy as Simone's. No, RuPaul's Drag Race is not harder than I thought it was gonna be. It, well, the competition itself was not harder than I thought it would be. The hard part was being away from my friends and family for so long, being isolated, all of that kind of stuff definitely took a bigger toll on me than I thought it would, but I, New going into Drag Race, it's less about the competition and it's more about showing what you have and having as much fun as you possibly can at any opportunity that you get because odds are you're only gonna get this opportunity once. 
I, I held it every moment so dearly because I knew it was like such an insane experience and I just, I my number one thing was to have as much fun as possible. This look I have talked about many times as being one of my favorite looks from my the entire run on RuPaul's Drag Race and this is my Eleganza top four prom look. It's just like the perfect combination to me of camp and fashion. I wore this with the headgear that's actually sitting up there on a helmet. A fun story about this is that right before I was leaving for the show, this was the last look to get created. My mom flew out to LA. This was actually the only look that could be created by my mom for the show. Everything else that I wore of hers was already made. But this one, she was literally like sewing it by hand as I was walking out the door to get into the van to go to the show and it's like so impeccably made and makeup all over the collar, of course, drag. This is from the season 12 promo and this is my like Evil Knievel inspired red, white and blue fantasy. This is kind of what jet setted the helmet trend. To me, the meaning behind doing Evil Knievel for the promo look was not only for the silhouette and the shape and the reference, but also because I feel like it told the story that I am a daredevil and I am ready to do whatever comes my way. This one, I'm sure you all recognize for my entrance look. This is the look that I decided I wanted to be first seen in on RuPaul's Drag Race. Personally, I think the entrance look is one of the most important looks of the entire show. This is the first time the world is gonna see you. So dress up like a pirate. And I did that. If I did walk into the workroom as a pirate again, there are some things that I would change. I would probably add like a brown thigh high wood grain boot to have a peg leg, I would definitely have a hook. Like less campy costumey pirate and more 1970s playboy romantic novel type pirate. And what's funny about this look, when I walked into the workroom, I had a line prepared to say, I don't know what the line was to save my life, I literally cannot remember it, but at the last second when I was supposed to say it, I just forgot it. And the only thing I could think to say was, ahoy. Ahoy. This is my Heather's look for the ball ball, which I won, deservingly. The ball challenge is definitely a look-based challenge, but I think it's also a challenge that is rooted in um, characterization and performance and um, also ability to make and create and sew, which all three of those things I pride myself on so much. So I knew going into the show, that I was gonna win. I was gonna take the win for the ball challenge. And if I didn't, I was gonna bend to the creme myself and go home because why else would I be there if I can't win the challenge that I know I could do best? This is my design challenge look from the show. Um, and no, this is not just staged for VH1 out of the closet. It is always hanging here and I'm always looking at it. It's like, it's like a very Captain Crunch type um, cereal-esque look. And at the time I wasn't thinking about that until the audience all referenced it and then I adopted it and said it was intentional. Don't get me wrong, my look was also hot glued together to some extent, but um, mine was also the only one that had a zipper and sleeves and a silhouette and proper sewing techniques like pleating and the puffy pirate sleeves and proportions and accessories. So when I saw the other girls' ball looks, I was like, okay, well, let's just hope their other looks are good too. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Gigi Good is a natural ginger. She always has red hair when she wakes up and any other color that she wears is merely a wig. I just love red hair. I just think it's so timeless and it's so um, unique and there's so many different variations of red to go through. So I have a lot of wigs and I never plan on stopping. I love hair. I just love looking at it. I love touching it. Like. That it just surrounds my bed as I'm sleeping, and I, I don't know. I have never gotten tired of styling hair. I've never dreaded having to style a wig for myself or Simone. This is my staple hair. I would say like this is the closest to Gigi's natural hair color as we're gonna get. And this was done by Malcolm, AKA Lil Stunty, who is responsible for helping me construct a lot of my wigs. And it's just so beautiful. So this is, this is Gigi's go-to natural hair. Ooh, I have done quite a few wigs for Simone on this season 13, um, including the finale. 
her eleganza hair, which was her like signature honey blonde in cornrows with rhinestones going all down each part. Her beads runway with the braided wig that had her name spelled out in beads. I also did her pockets wig, which was the red and yellow paramour like scene kid. And her promo hair was so fun to do and was the biggest hairstyling feat that I have ever done. This shelf is kind of my like memorabilia shelf. You might recognize this little diva right here as the first helmet. Well, actually, that would have probably, no, that would have been the third helmet on the first episode that I wore, number three. When I was preparing for the show, I did not put into consideration that I have four helmets on the runway. You know, when you're preparing for the show, you don't know what order the runways are gonna be in. It just so happened that all these looks happened to be in the same episode, miraculously. And so I became the helmet girl. And um, I, I have always loved helmet culture, I guess. I don't know what else you would call that, but like motorcycles, um, even like bike helmets and um, space, like astronaut helmets. It's a, a fun accessory that you don't see a lot of people use a lot. And it was fun to do some self-referencing in the finale for that as well with my matching teal ruched velvet helmet that Marco Monroe made. Right next to the croquet mallet um, is my perfume that I may or may not have stolen from set from our branding challenge that says goodnight bitch. I don't know where they got the fragrance actually, but it smells pretty good and I kind of wear it pretty frequently. Behind the perfume is my Dale doll, which I renamed Vivian when I was a little kid and that's a doll that my mom had when she was growing up and that was kind of my introduction to fashion because I would just make clothes for her out of napkins and um, anything I had around and I got her tattooed on my side. My inspirations have definitely changed. Supermodels have only recently become a big inspiration to me. Prior to that, my inspirations have always been less real people and more fictional women. Um, Daphne Blake from Scooby-Doo, Barbie. For a long time, fashion and, uh, illustrations were a big inspiration to me because my mom just had tons of patterns. It's, it's those women that are on clothing patterns that are just like six feet tall and like teeny tiny waist and like you know, torpedo tits. The thing that inspired me the most about those women were their poses and their stances. And it's very like that Dior pose or um, it's it's just very demure and, and feminine. And I just, I'm so obsessed with femininity. <laughs> I never want to be doing the same thing that I was doing two years ago. And I think a part of this plan, which unfortunately has been interrupted, is walking runway but I don't necessarily want to be in a runway show because I'm Gigi Good. I want to be in a runway show because I'm an androgynous model who can work in the industry and make a name for myself that way. Later on down the line, I would love to come out with a line of wigs. I would love to come out with a fashion line. I would also love to design high heels because I have always just had like a high heel fetish. I could see myself in this house probably for another year maybe, but the House of Avalon and I have been talking about getting one like big commune space for us all to live, all to have our own rooms and have one big drag room where all of our drag you know, lives, like Museum of Simone Hair and like all of that kind of stuff, which is an absolute dream and I'm, I am sure it's not too far off. Well, that is my home, and this was my space. These are my things, these are my stuff, the things that inspire me, the things that keep me going. Thank you so much for watching. Need a mask? We have masks. <laughs>